I have zero motivation to buy an Xbox. And it's it's super concerning because I used to love the Xbox brand. I was an Xbox 360 guy. Um, and before that, I was a Sony guy. And obviously, my main platform is the PC, but I do like to buy these platforms for um, the exclusives just because they're just there's usually a good bit of exclusives that I'm, I'm hyped up for on each side. But with Xbox, it's like Halo's dead to me, completely dead to me, because 343 is garbage and everyone knows it. Yeah. Um, then you have Gears of War, which is, this, everyone said in their reviews, it's the same thing as the previous Gears of War, so why would I play it? Um, and then on top of that, the only other thing that I would really, really, really like is Forza. That's now on PC. So eventually, once that price drops low enough, or they release it on Steam, which I'll buy it for full price on Steam if they, you know, put it on Steam. But if they keep it on the Windows Store, I'm waiting until that thing's like thirty dollars because they don't deserve full price on the Windows Store. Um, but that's now on PC. So if I want to play that, I can just do it that way. I don't have any reason to buy an Xbox, and they they can run their ads all they want. 4K Blu-ray <laughs> is not enough to make people buy that platform. It's just not no, no, because no. everything else about it, it's like, why would you own one when the other brand and Sony can fill two entire shows full of games and you can barely fill one show? Like, Wait, oh, yeah, I mean, the E3 show only had, uh, had a ton of third party games. They even showed like Final Fantasy and one of their big announcements was this Gwent card game that everyone already knew it was coming. So. Man, uh, Microsoft is really in a tough spot right now, and they have the Scorpio. That that's like the only thing they're going for them. But on the other hand, a cool, awesome 4K console without any interesting games, it's just not interesting. And it's super interesting if you look at the different approaches that they take. Sony thinks that the PC is the biggest competitor of the PS4, and Microsoft is going the other way around. They think the PlayStation 4 is the biggest competitor because they're releasing all their games on PC. So for PC players, there's like really no, why would I go and buy out this system that they also have to play or pay to play online for and stuff like that. While on the PlayStation, I have a ton of exclusives that I can get on my PC. And um, yeah, I, I, I will be fine with that. So it's just, yeah. I'm, Right now, it's still like we're waiting for those exclusives and the lineup is super looks super great. We had Uncharted, of course, this year and now The Lost Guardian dropped. And yeah, I'm surprised that it, it's really that, as good as they thought. But versus The Lost Guardian, on the Xbox side, there is a, a Dead Rising 4 that's also coming to PC, by the way. And that's like a game of 4, right? It's a 4, mm -hmm. fourth game and it's like the same over and over again. Gears of War, it's all, it also released on PC, so even if you wanted to play that uh, and you are a PC gamer, you could do it. So, man, they really should, I think that that's like a big blunder to, to release these games on PC as well. And maybe they thought that they needed to because they spent a lot of money on it and um, they still wanted to yeah, make the money back, obviously. And in the case of some games, it really helped them. But, it kind uh, of goes. Think... It goes back to our discussion that it, that publishers, aka like Sony and Microsoft, need exclusives more than the developers on their platform do, because Uncharted could sell gangbusters on whatever platform it's on. Mm -hmm, uh, the, the Last of Us could easily sell tons of copies on whatever platform it's on and be able to fund itself on whatever platform it wants to. It doesn't need Sony at all. Horizon, no. if you walk into any investor building or any publisher and you show them what you have, they're gonna easily invest into it. So it doesn't need anything either. There's everything that's on the, the Sony side doesn't need Sony at all. It just doesn't. But because Sony has them and because they've worked such a great relationship with them, They've built up their brand so people know that if they want those types of games or the, that type of those franchises, they can buy a, a PlayStation 4. But with Microsoft, what exclusives do they have that haven't had so many sequels made and have not really evolved over time? Like Forza has evolved over time. I'll give Forza that, but that's like the only thing I can think of. Gears of War is the same as it was in the previous ones. Halo is worse than it was in the previous ones. 
And but but know. Halo and, and Gears of War are made by a B tier st- studio. It's not like the studio that made these games. While The Last of Us is created by Naughty Dog, the new Uncharted game was That's created by Naughty issue. Dog. Yeah. So and uh, it's worrying for the Xbox mm-hmm. brand because unless they do something, the reason why I don't have my my hopes not completely dead for Xbox is E3 might allow them to show off some stuff that we don't know about, but. I just don't really think that will be the case. I, I really don't. I think they'll have another average conference when they could easily, easily do really, really well because of what Sony has done over the course of this year. And yeah, but I, what I, what I think has happened, and I think that we still see the um, bad influence from the uh, Xbox One reveal here. They were focusing not on the games anymore. They were focusing on TV TV shows. They invested a ton of money in a halo tv show and of course they also had a game alongside it but yeah the focus was tv they had this quantum break game and it also had a tv show they really thought that this was the future while sony was doubling down on games so they gave all their studios a ton of time to make the best game possible and yeah we have to wait for a long time but if we look at this lineup i can just in my head it's like horizon versus the full microsoft lineup I would prefer Horizon over every single one of them, and I would prefer the Spider-Man game over everything. Of course, we didn't know, don't know a lot of it. Maybe Detroit is a better uh, example of that. But if you really look at Halo Wars 2, um, this um, scale-bound crackdown, it's like games from a different era. It's games from the Xbox 360 era, even some of them from the original Xbox era that they're still rehashing still doing the same shit and then they think okay let's make a new game let's uh look at platinum games a japanese developer that will probably help bring a ton of sales well the platinum games are pretty good but they usually don't sell well so why should this like game about a guy with headphones and a dragon sell really well (laughs) to the mainstream audience it just simply won't so with horizon it's like yeah i i i I talked about this a lot it's like the if you look at it, you want it, and Microsoft needs those games as well, and that's why they probably went to Crystal Dynamics and said, hey, this, this Tomb Raider game was really awesome, you guys are making a new one, let's make it exclusive first on the Xbox. And I think that we, while Phil Spencer said that they wanted to move away from this, they, if they don't have any studios, they have the Minecraft studio, of course, but yeah, you already discussed it like in the last episode that, yeah, it's not... That, that will be on PC, that will be everywhere, so that will not be their cards to play here. Um, what can they do? What what is the, what what is card can they play that people are thinking like, oh man, I really need an Xbox, and they started so good, they started with Sunset Overdrive, sadly that didn't sell well, but it's still my favorite game of this new generation. Um, they started so good with those types of games, they had Quantum Break, that's a cool new game, right? That's a game that our people are looking at okay I want to play it it didn't turn out that well but that's a game that you can like put in your lineup and say okay we're proud of that well if we look at the upcoming games there's just simply not if I went to the E3 I, I mean I went to their E3 booth and really the interesting games were like indie games you have like this Cuphead game you have this um, happy we happy few game well that's also launching on PC by the way but Still, yeah, it's pretty like, much pretty much any indie game watches on PC and then goes to consoles well. afterwards because yeah, it's so, a, it's so much cheaper and they don't have to mm-hmm. deal with all the politics and everything and yeah it, it's really it comes down to the fact that Sony's right PC is their the greatest competition because in the end they have to create a compelling experience for people who are on the PC to maybe buy a PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 4 Pro uh, that way they can you know buy the exclusives or whatever because they know that they're not going to get a lot of third party sales from PC people but they know that first party titles could coax people over and allow some more purchases to come through and more sales to occur because I mean when it really comes down to it yeah I might buy a pro but when it comes down to it I'm not going to play any third party titles on said pro because I would rather have a, a way better experience on my PC uh, than a, a console could really ever bring and that's, that's what a lot of people have been saying from the beginning is if exclusives didn't exist, these hardware companies would likely disappear, become something else. Not necessarily like an exclusive platform, but just a, um, a conduit for people who maybe want a little bit more of a simplistic experience. 
but being able to play all the games that they want to because PC has so many options out there. Like when you buy a PC, you have thousands of titles that are bundled with said PC because there's a lot of free to play games out there. The best multiplayer games of all time are on PC, League of Legends, Dota 2, um, World of Warcraft, Star Wars The Old Republic, like a lot of huge AAA titles that a lot of millions of people play um, are on PC. So Sony sees that, they're like, okay, well, we have our platform, it's doing really well, it's beating the competition in Xbox. Xbox is, doesn't really have anything around the corner that can entice these people to come over to our platform and maybe just have that as their alternative platform. Um, so we're like, okay, well, let's completely disregard Microsoft because they're trash now. They, they don't have anything around the corner and they're not proving that they have anything around the corner. We could fill two shows full of games without hardly any talking. They can barely fill one. So let's just go ahead and keep, you know, pushing more and more exclusives and that is going to sell consoles. And I think they're right regarding that. I think that's honestly why the, I don't think that PlayStation VR should have even been a thing. I think that it's smart maybe five years from now, mm -hmm. but yeah. I don't think right now it was needed. I think they should have just went full on pro, not disregard the PlayStation VR. Those extra sales that were on the PlayStation VR would have been with the, for the pro instead. And that would have sold more pro consoles, give developers more of a reason to develop for it, give them a easier sell in terms of showing it off um, on a variety of different facets, like on E3 and also on PSX. And so, yeah, I mean, I think Sony's definitely in a better position here. And as much as I thought that Microsoft could have maybe come came back and just you know pull out all the stops in this coming E3, I don't think that they have the capacity to anymore. I just really don't. Yeah. After this PSX, I think that Sony just completely just dropped the mic right in front of them and <laughs> yeah. and Phil Spencer can't do anything as much as I like Phil Spencer his company is in a super bad position that even if he pulls out all the stops at E3 it won't be enough mm -hmm. no it's uh, yeah it's it, it will be super I mean we say it every year but this E3 <laughs> will be super interesting to watch uh, especially with Scorpio and how uh, Sony will uh, of course comment on that how they will react on that because what I think will happen is that Sony will just be like You go ahead with your console and your 4k We also have a console and okay. It's not native 4k, but a lot of people don't even see it It's just the name that yeah native 4k of course. It's it's better Well a lot of people if you really put horizon like in native 4k and like what it is on the place for pro next to each other they won't see it. I can probably, I guess that like 80% of the people would not even see it. Um, so go ahead, do your Scorpio thing. We will just have the best lineup we ever had on a console and show people that, yeah, it's of course the games that you want to play. And yeah, it will be, I think that they're going to pull another third party thing, uh, Cyberpunk yeah. exclusive. I, I, I hope they don't. <laughs> Um, I don't think they will. Marketing-wise, possibly, but I I do not see CD Projekt Red they doing must. that. No, 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 if, I don't see If anything, doing. Sony would be the, the more appropriate place to go, because it's more more of a they vibrant have a better platform. relationship with Microsoft, though. That's, that's yeah. true, that's true. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. I, mm, I, that, one, that wouldn't even say, but if they did a time exclusive, that would just piss everyone off, and CD Projekt yeah. Red's not going to do that because they don't need to at this point. Like, no, yeah, that's... like, give us some money and we'll market it, you know, with Xbox. We don't care, but we're not going to make it a time what, what, exclusive. What can they do then? Maybe a Rockstar stuff, but Sony has the Red Dead already. So Sony next year will have a ton of awesome games and Red Dead, like the marketing for that. It's, it's going to take way more than marketing, though. They they need actual, a viable exclusives on the Xbox brand. I mean, they can they can do that, run their ads and say, best games lineup ever. But when you look at it, it's like, oh, well, you just made on Coke PC. and then you made Coke 2 and then Coke 3 and... Now you have Coke Classic, and it's like, oh, well, uh, I guess I can just go, you know, to a vending machine and get that Coke, but it's going to taste the same exact, you know, yeah, it's yeah. just going to leave the same taste in my mouth. And, and then I can go to, you know, Sony's vendor, and there's a bunch of different, you know, options. It's it's more of uh, of a variety, and that's yeah, what people... Yeah, variety, that's, and that's new a, stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what people want, is they want variety. And you're, you're right about the 4K thing. I mean, when it really comes down to it, 
the average consumer, when they go to wherever they go to buy their, their particular console, during holiday of next year, when they see the Scorpio on the shelves, even if it's $400, which isn't probably going to happen, it's probably $500, $600, and then they see a PlayStation 4 Pro for $300, bundled with a game possibly even, what are they going to buy? They're not going to give a shit about that Scorpio. They're going to buy the PlayStation 4 Pro, especially when little Jimmy wants to play Horizon and Ratchet yeah. and Clank and Crash Bandicoot. Always little Jimmy. And yeah, always little Jimmy. And Last of Us <laughs> 2 is going to be on there. You know, they're going to buy a little Jimmy that PlayStation 4 Pro. <laughs> they ain't going to be looking at that Scorpio. Yeah. So I, I honestly don't. And then, yeah, I don't oh, see any, any way out for Xbox at this point. And that's bad in terms of competition. But I think that. PC makes Sony a better company than this the Xbox brand ever could. Because, yeah, obviously Windows, people always game on Windows, and Windows is owned by Microsoft. But Microsoft doesn't really own the gaming community on the Windows platform. Steam they don't. Does. It's, it's Steam, exactly. And even at that, you know, even before Steam, people made their own communities through other different methods. So... And we always retaliate against Microsoft when it comes to Windows. I mean, shit, everyone hates Windows 10. Not everyone, but there's a large uprising about Windows 10. People are still on 7 and enjoying that, or on 8. And mm -hmm. so, and there's also, you could play on Ubuntu and Linux and a bunch of other um, facets and operating systems that aren't made by Microsoft. But when it comes down to it, this E3, I uh, I mean, we could say this all we want about, you know, we say this about every E3, but... This E3, I think, is going to be either the beginning of the end for the Xbox brand and just the ascension of Sony, or it's going to be enough for Xbox to stay relevant, and Sony is just going to have to still sort of deal with that fly on the wall or that fly that's in the room and try and swat it down. Um, that will be basically the Xbox brand, and it's going to be intriguing. Uh, yeah. as far right, as right what now, they do. Sony has the better cards, and they like had the, this whole generation. And Microsoft did some things, and they sold more in the U.S. That really helped, um, like in the previous months. But during Black Friday, it, it looks like PlayStation 4 uh, won again. But like, if we look yep. at the future, it's just the Xbox only can. Right now, a lot, yeah, it's just um, they can only have it from people that already bought the Xbox, so that friends buy it as well to get in that community. But for the exclusive games, or yeah, they don't even have exclusive games. It's like a super hard sell. I just I just want to add one more thing uh, before yeah. we wrap up. I think honestly at this point, and I know some people on Xbox will hate me for saying this. I think at this point, Xbox needs to become the Windows box. Like just sell your box that's simplistic for everyone. That will compete with Sony, I think, more than what they're doing right now. Because it's clear yeah. on PC even that they're trying to push the Windows Store. So why not just make it so your Xbox can also maybe run Steam games and run other games as well? Uh, because that would be more compelling to me, um, not, not to me, but um, to me as a sort of a tech enthusiast, as a more viable option for the mainstream consumer than mm -hmm. trying to combat Sony when you're just completely like six feet into the ground trying to dig yourself back out because there's so many exclusives that Sony has and there's really no way you can combat it because you don't want to invest the amount of time or money into achieving it. And I think at this point, people are tired they're, of they're their current late, franchises. As well. Yeah, they're they, they can invest all they want, but they just simply don't have the talent, don't have the studios to yeah, make they, things exactly, possible. Exactly, and they're running out of time, so they need mm -hmm. to make a move. And I think the move is to hug that Windows platform as much as they can and be like okay we're just going to make a simplistic pc we're going to call it the whatever box the windows box and you can do everything you can with, with the xbox, pc though, but, yeah. they, they would you could do everything you can with a pc but it's a little bit more simplified for you and that would be more compelling because it would offer yeah. thousands of free games that people can play that they've never even heard of before and even with steam there's tons of indie games that they've never heard of before it would just offer so much more, so much, so much more of a value. And I think they can get away with that a lot more than Sony could, obviously, because Sony doesn't own an operating system other than their own that's not released to anyone but people who buy their console. So, yeah, it's... I don't see any way out for Microsoft at this point. Um, do you? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I think that, that, that the thing that 
that you're describing is like something we already see happening. I mean, they're releasing their games also on PC. They're now pushing this Windows Store. They're, um, yeah, they they have this like buy it any play it anywhere. So you buy it on Xbox One, you have it on PC as well. It's like they already have one uh, store without them, yeah, calling it one store. It's not like the same store you access on your Xbox. So I think that that will be super interesting. But then you still have. Like not every game is supported with a controller, so you still have like that that hurdle. Um, but I think that would be the only way to combat Sony because they can just get away with, okay, we're releasing the Scorpio, it's our new Xbox, and we have some exclusive games, but those games will not be, will never be able to, like combat, um, yeah, the the PlayStation exclusives and even in, and of course also not the Nintendo exclusives. I mean, they're also of course going to do some stuff. So what I think will happen is that you will then see a sort of um, broad platform with the Xbox where Microsoft will have the Minecraft and stuff like that on that box. It will be super uh, like the the best way to play PC games on your TV. It will be what the Steam box was planning to be, but now with Microsoft pushing it really hard, well, Steam was like, Okay, Alienware, come in, Racer, make your stuff. We will just put it on our Steam page mm-hmm. and call it a day. Well, Microsoft will probably really push it. They, of course, already have the Xbox One controller integration in a lot of games. So, it, and they it, could they I could think, always release another input device too, like because it'd yeah. be compatible with everything. You can just do a Absolutely. a wireless keyboard mouse setup, or for example, if mm-hmm. you need it, um, or you can yeah. push the Steam controller or something like it. Um, that would work with it as well. And with Steam Big Picture, there's really, it would be super easy to integrate it. And mm-hmm. it would work really well to straight and, out of the box. So, And they're also looking at uh, VR support from Oculus. And of course, that's a exactly. PC pl- yeah. uh, thing. So if they can have that, then they already have like a huge competitor versus the PlayStation VR. Because then for me, it would be like, okay, I can buy this awesome Xbox with uh, Oculus. Well, I'm like not looking at buying a new PC that is capable of running that anytime soon. So that would really entice me to go in that VR direction because I like the Oculus exclusives way more right now than the PlayStation VR exclusives. So that would be an awesome way to do it. And then you have, on the other hand, PlayStation just making their own stuff. Everyone will buy that, um, that, that wants to be a part of that community and that wants to play those fantastic games. And then you also have Nintendo doing their own thing like they always have. And then it will be hard um, for people to like, I mean, then you will have four like pretty different platforms while the Xbox and the PC can be like, yeah, they're probably one and the same. They're going to become that because I don't think that Microsoft will release games exclusive on, on Xbox. It will be interesting though because that trending, while it would be on Steam, it will probably not be on the Xbox, so there are still some complicated things, but I think that that's the only way that they can combat this, because then they will just have this PC library with exclusive games that they are not even like, uh, like have a relationship with whatsoever, because they're just putting that out on Steam, and then they have that on their console, so I mean, they're, they're already the they're already not really trying that much with pushing their own exclusives. So I mean, Mm-mm, that's it's right. Just, it, it's the writing on the wall at this point. But yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be very intriguing to see sort of what they do during E3 and if that's the direction they're going to be going with the Scorpio, because we still yeah. don't really fully know much about the Scorpio in terms of what their philosophy is going to be with that. So mm-hmm. moving forward, it'll be cool to see what they have in store, and we already sort of know what Sony has in store because they're kind of just throwing it out there and doing it yeah, in grand I, you, fashion. You can, yeah, you can, if you look at the future, you can really see, okay, Sony will have in 2017 GT Sports, um, like maybe Days Gone or Detroit, like the Crash Bandicoot game Horizon. So they have like some awesome exclusives. Then the year after that, they probably have God of War, um, like the Spider-Man game, uh, some other uh, titles that they're going to announce maybe. And then in 2019, you have Death Stranding and Lost of Us Part 2. And I probably forgot some games. But anyway, that's like their... And then you have a great lineup every year, and then you, of course, combine that with the third party, and yeah, you're you're going very strong. So, yeah. Well, what do you yeah? What do you think about 2019? Um, Cyberpunk, Death Stranding, and Lost of Us Part Two. 
I I think that's good. I mean, yeah, that, I think that's totally possible though. But yeah, I think one could I, slip to 2018. <laughs> um, I mean, mm -hmm. when it comes down to it, as far as we were talking about Kojima and Death Stranding, um, with, being that their know, initial man. thing is 2018, but if that's the case, I no, lose a little hype no, for it. it but I don't it think it's going to be the case. I'm no, just saying no, that it could slip, but yeah, I, I yeah. doubt it. I really doubt the it. The only thing that they have going for it right now is that they already have the engine. And yeah, they can just start working on their vision it's because true. they already have the vision. So they just need time, right? They don't need uh, the IDs. They obviously have that. Kojima was probably sitting on this ID for 10 years because he didn't want to make Metal Gear games for a very long time. But Ko Konami was like, do it, please. Yeah, um, sort of Chinese sweatshop is like yeah. you, make, you make Metal Gear and Metal Gear only. <laughs> exactly.